In 1945, following the end of World War II, a group of U.S. investors, mostly with stakes in the Chesapeake and Ohio Railroad, formed the Blue Ridge and Western Railroad in order to compete head-to-head with the Clinchfield Railroad. The Blue Ridge and Western Railroad became known simply as the Brew Railroad. The investors, led by ambitious railroad men Ted McCormick and John McGowan, hired retired U.S. Army General J.P. Manning to serve as the Brew Railroad's first CEO and general manager. Manning's assignment was to use his military logistics expertise to quickly build a railroad that the CNO could acquire and then leverage to merge with the Clinchfield. The gamble paid off. In 1980, when the CNO investors leveraged the Brew Railroad in the merger, they combined the CNO with Seaboard and eventually became CSX. In 1947, under a Congressional Appropriations Bill lobbied by McCormick and McGowan, sponsored by U.S. House Speaker Sam Rayburn and signed into law by President Harry Truman, the Brew Railroad was granted unprecedented resources and abandoned rights of way in order to boost the extraction and export of bituminous coal needed to support the reconstruction of post-war Europe known as the Marshall Plan. General Manning secured low-cost contracts for steam locomotives from American locomotive company known as Alco with primary production from its subsidiary, Richmond Locomotive Works, in Virginia's capital. At the same time, Manning secured Army surplus purchases of the latest new electric diesel engines by General Motors' Electromotive Division, particularly FA and FB locomotives that were built for the Army and mothballed before ever seeing substantial use. In a 2017 agreement with the Richmond Freelance and Prototype Model Railroaders, the Brew Railroad name, logo, and rights to operate a scenic excursion train and freight consists were reborn. Owing to generous grants from both CSX and Norfolk Southern, all of the absorbed fallen flags are permitted to display markings on prototypical locomotives and rolling stock. Today, the Brew Railroad is alive and well. The Brew Railroad operations centered in and dispatched from Brew Yard in a high and tight valley of the Blue Ridge Mountains about 10 miles outside of Marion, Virginia in the town of Lebanon. Two main lines extended north to Rago, West Virginia, south to Crowder, North Carolina, west to Devine, Tennessee, and east to Marion, Virginia. From 1947 to 1980, Post-war commercial expansion and residential development contributed to the early success of the Brew Railroad. The Holston River between Marion and Bristol attracted businesses and residents and centered the Brew Railroad's diversified freight customers between Marion, Devine, Demasi, and Crowder. The Brew Railroad was marked by well-engineered tunnels and bridges crafted to tame the wild undulations of the Blue Ridge Mountains. The most impressive tunnel on the line, Parham Pass, was nearly two miles long, cutting through Beasley Mountain between Lower Abingdon, Virginia and Meat Camp, North Carolina, crossing both the north and south forks of the Holston River and passing Melling Power and Light on its way to Schumann's Landing. A second tunnel worth noting was the Burton Bore, a one-mile tube between Demasi, Virginia and the Dunlap Dam on the Holston River to the west. Demasi, Virginia was home to the Demasi Fuel Terminal, Herbert House Paints, Conwell Consolidated Fruit Growers, and the Carley and Egger Metal Stamping Works. Each of these line-side customers were serviced by trains classified and dispatched from Kern's Yard, nestled in a valley outside of Mountain City, North Carolina. Schumann's Landing on the Holston River yielded an interchange for truck to barge, freight, and raw material delivery. The Holston River flow and coal delivery generated regional electricity at the Melling Power and Light between Abingdon, Virginia and Demasi, Virginia. 
Serving the beef-eating needs of a growing population, the Crockett Brothers Steak Company maintains stock pens, a slaughterhouse, and a packing company at the base of Beasley Mountain, north of Meat Camp, North Carolina, and drew water from the Dunlap Dam on the Holston River. Kern's classification and storage yard was the southern fulcrum for Brew Railroad operations. Trains to and from Demasi, Virginia, Meat Camp, North Carolina, Zarney, Virginia, and Rago, West Virginia originated at Kern's yard. After heading north from Kern's yard, trains diverged at Jerry's Junction, heading left or north to Rago or heading right and northwest to Zarney. In the foothills of Black Mountain at Zarney, Virginia, the Brew Railroad serviced two customers whose product was distributed throughout the entire territory. Coglin Quarry produced much of the crushed stone used for maintenance of way ballast and subroadbed while Schott Rock and Block Company produced blocks, bagged aggregates, and cement. Both customers' products were shipped through Black Mountain Lower Tunnel on the way back to Brew Yard. Trains returned from Zarni to Lebanon by emerging from Black Mountain Lower Tunnel and passing Lebanon Station at the north end of Brew Yard. Brew Yard included service for both steam and diesel locomotives, a sanding tower, fuel racks, a roundhouse, and a railway express agency depot. Interchange between the Chesapeake and Ohio, Norfolk and Western, and Southern Railroads occurred in Lebanon. Rago, West Virginia, located just west of Beckley, was a rugged town east of Black Mountain and was the highest elevation on the Brew Railroad and its northern terminus. In fact, the long grade from Kern's Yard to Rago was known as Chicken Run to some and Difficult Hill to others. Pausing in Rago at Bailey Bridge Station and continuing upgrade to service two booming businesses, more furniture and custom builders, and the B. Thomas & Sons steel and pipe distributors. Just beyond Bailey Bridge Station was the fork dividing the lines between Bluefield, Virginia, Lebanon Ridge, Virginia, and Divine, Tennessee, also known as Bill Lithgow's Branch. Bill's Branch sat in a narrow valley in the shadow of Black Mountain and was also home to the Sitzman and Son Sawmill. The left or northeast fork at Bill's Branch diverted trains toward Bluefield, Virginia. 
Loads of coal leaving Bear Creek Coal Tipple No. 2 at Black Mountain in Rago, West Virginia and headed south toward Marion thundered past the miles-long Peterson Peak in Bluefield, Virginia. In the shadow of the peak were numerous line-side industries, including Carlson Construction, Corlew Coal Surveyors, and Giles Granary. The right, Northwest Fork at Bill's Branch diverted trains toward Warncliffe, West Virginia, and Lebanon Ridge, and was the end of the long grade from Kern's Yard known as Chicken Run or Difficult Hill. The grade ended at the Black Mountain Upper Tunnel, just after crossing the Bear Creek Trestle with a fleeting glimpse of the Bear Creek Coal Tipple No. 2. Virtually all trains traversing the Brew Railroad passed through Marion, or parked on the 1.3 mile long siding. Marion was a popular watering hole for train men and car drivers navigating the Shenandoah Valley. Contributing to town traffic was Marion Station, the law firm of Durden, Dewey, Scroom and Howe, Patterson Pastry and Confections, Stallnaker Store, and the Blost Bar and Grill. Trains heading west from Marion went in two directions. Heading southwest, they could pass through Beasley Mountain, emerging on a ridge above the Holston River and proceeding toward Divine, Tennessee. Heading due west, Toward Upper Abingdon, Virginia, trains would pass through Beasley Mountain and traverse through Hamill Hill Yard, where they would be broken and classified. The sweeping vistas seen from the Brew Railroad's highest and longest pass were features of the territory known as Lebanon Ridge. So named because it overlooked the Brew Yard in Lebanon, the ridge also terminated in a critical junction at Beasley Mountain. Heading left southeast at the junction, trains could pass through Beasley Mountain and cross the Thompson Trestle to Crowder, North Carolina. Divine Tennessee quickly emerged between the Holston River forks, serving a growing population accelerated by the Brew Railroad. Businesses thrived like Lincolnus Liquidators, Piper Paper Company, Wesley Wayside Service Station, Mitchell Motor Inn, and Johnson Jewelers. Corlew Coal Surveyors also maintained a coal platform for truck deliveries here. Hamill Hill Yard in Abingdon was home to the Roden Railroad Academy where ambitious and eager students cut new careers on the rails. The yard also served the passenger platform at Skeen Station where Blue Ridge Road crossed the Gordon Andrews Bridge. In the peaks above Divine at Steeple Rock, the overlooked chapel gleamed. On Monday to Friday, the offices of the Fitzgerald Forestry Service rented the chapel and maintained a scenic overlook that offered visitors the best view of Divine, and in the distance, the towns of Milton and Monterey, both branches of the Clinchfield Railroad. From Lebanon Ridge at Beasley Mountain, heading right or due west at the junction, trains would pass through a tunnel at Doe Ridge Ravine and emerge to run downgrade toward Divine, Tennessee. Beasley Mountain was the most challenging obstacle overcome by General Manning in the launch of the Brew Railroad, as it was the epicenter of all rail operations and also represented the pinnacle of geological engineering marvels. The Tweetsie Railroad, originally chartered in 1866, 
contributed abandoned right-of-way trackage to the Brew Railroad, including historic wooden trestles along the Doe Ridge Ravine to the west of Beasley Mountain. Trains leaving Crowder, North Carolina, crossed the 300-foot-high Thompson Trestle over the Holston River before crossing the Tweetsie Trestles toward Divine. The daily trains to Crowder crossed the Holston River on the 300-foot-high Thompson Trestle and passed the Fugate Falls and Bryant Brook. West of Bryant Brook, down a well-used spur track, was the Steiner Wood Treatment Company where virtually all railroad ties on the Brew Railroad were bathed with creosote. Coal production from Bear Creek Coal Tipple No. 2 at Black Mountain in West Virginia and Buzzards Roost Coal at Buzzards Roost Mountain near Crowder, North Carolina supplied the Brew Railroad with its most steady and bankable revenue from 1947 to 1980. Crowder was founded in 1870 at the base of Buzzards Roost Mountain, from which an unending supply of coal was mined. The Crowder community was transported to and from Crowder Station, and a bustling business community formed, including the Godori Gazette, Demerchant Deli, Hebel Hooch Distillery, Puzz's Pets, and Myers General Store. Thank you for touring the Blue Ridge and Western Railroad. We hope you will love the Brew Railroad and visit again. She remains today one of the most stunning and prolific Class I railroad empires east of the Mississippi. From mountain taming tunnels to river ridged main lines, from bustling towns to never ending yards, from towering peaks and precarious ridges to quaint stations, small shops, and lush river-filled valleys. The Brew Railroad invites you to come ride the rails like you have never seen before. Thanks again for rail fanning with us. Now let's finish great by moving some freight. Stimulate your brain by running a train. All aboard! <laughs>